Right. Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise to Torah and Nancy Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Mohab Kapodash, who are worship of spirit and truth and all your faithful locks about the full wind. Continue laboring in truth and sincerity. Shalom and Brakathon. Double honors to the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to go into uh, a history lesson in Acts chapter 7 and how Stephen broke down the history of, of, of to our forefathers and to Israelites in Jerusalem. And and also, too, I want to debunk, which brothers already made plenty of videos debunking that 400-year prophecy here in America, um, you know, which a lot of Israelites don't even understand that. They don't even read. But how Stephen understood that that prophecy was already um, already played out in ancient Egypt, right? When we were in bondage underneath these uh, Egyptians and um, or Hamites in ancient Egypt, so going into the history um, in Acts chapter 7. So Stephen understood very well the history and the, and the Israelites in ancient Egypt. Why? Because he was, a, he was an Israelite. And the people that he broke down the history to were Israelites as well. But Stephen's story begins in Acts chapter 6. And I'm going to start from the top. Then I'm going to jump down to verse, uh, then I'm going to jump to Acts 7. Lord will um, Exodus 12, Genesis 15, Genesis 17, Genesis the 12th chapter, and whatever precepts or how this, you know, wherever the Spirit takes me. So let's let's begin. So this is another history lesson. Lord willing, this will be edifying, right? To feed the sheep and lambs of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai continually and daily, right? As commanded. This is Acts chapter 6, and let's begin at verse 1. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because the widows were neglected, ne were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve, then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them, and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Right? Meaning to open up soup kitchens. The apostles we're not about opening up no soup kitchens or running no food pantry or no food program like these Christians do here, right? They can open up a soup kitchen, but they can't break you down the script. They can't break down the scriptures down to you. Verse 3, wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business, right? Bring them into the ministry. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen. So Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Laying hands meaning to 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 to, um, uh, to bringing the uh, bringing them into the ministry. That's the laying hands doesn't mean putting your hands literally on them. All right, it means to bring them into the ministry. All right, and the word of God increased, and the, the number and the and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines. Right? Libertines. And Cyrenians and Alexandrians. Yes, yeah, Cyrene or Cyrenians, there were those of, of, of North Africa. Cyrene, Libya. To be exact, Cyrene, Libya, right? You had Israelites scattered in Cyrene, Libya, and Alexandrians. You had Israelites scattered in Alexandria, or Alexandrians, which were at, uh, of Alexandria, Egypt, during the time of the Ptolemaic Empire, Ptolemy I Soldier, Ptolemy II Philadelphus, and the Ptolemaic Empire, you had Israelites in Egypt, all right? So these were all Israelites that were scattered, right? You got to go into uh, more history in order to understand that. And of them of Cilicia, Cilicia, and of Asia Minor, Cilicia, and of Asia, right, Cilicia is in Asia Minor, disputing with Stephen, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. 
right? Stephen was so full of that Holy Spirit that he was cutting these, these Israelites left and right, left and right, left and right. He's just cutting them all day long. Just like now, when people come up to us and you, a, a, a lot of Israelites come up to us, we, uh, the scriptures say what? He'll get, uh, the Most High gave us a mouth. Yahweh Shai, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai gave us a mouth that our enemies would not resist or even gainsay. Meaning the Most High put that spirit on us to, to cut our, our enemies deep. Uh, or those that oppose and come up against this truth. Right? Now let's go to Acts chapter 7. So you had Israelites that were contending with, 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 with Stephen. Acts chapter 7 and verse 1. Then said the high priest, are these things so? And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken, right? Men, brethren, and fathers, meaning be, to be of the same kinship or lineage. My brethren, my, my fathers, right? Hearken. The power of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Quran, which Quran is uh, Haran, another way of saying it, Quran, which is Haran, which Haran is in Syria. And Mesopotamia is in um, Babylon, Babylon or Babylonia or Ur of the Chaldees. So Stephen was breaking down the history of the Israelites that our forefather Abraham was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Haran, right? Before he dwelt in Iran. Verse 3, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country, meaning out of Ur of the Chaldees, and from thy kindred, meaning of your own lineage, your own people, and come into the land which I shall show thee. Right? And that land eventually was, was uh, what's, I don't want to get into that yet. Well, I'll mention it was uh, um, Israel, or what they, they called the land of Canaan before it was called Israel. Now he said, and, and said unto him, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred. Why? Because the Most High wanted to remove Abraham from the presence of his kindred because this was going down. This Joshua chapter 24, and let's begin at um, verse 2. Let's get right to the point. And this before Joshua died, right? He was breaking history down to Israelites um, and, and Shechem, right? And, and gathered, right? Because Joshua was from the tribe of Ephraim, and Ephraim dwelt in Shechem, or in that, around that area, right? All right, but let's get to the point. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, why Yahweh, Shai, our power, the power of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, God of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old time, even Terah. That, that side of the flood is speaking about Ur of the Chaldees, the, or Babylon, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, or Nahor, Nahor, and they served other gods. So our forefathers, like Terah, Abraham's father, was serving other gods. That's why the Most High wanted Abraham to leave the Ur of the Chaldees, get you out of the, get you out of this land, right? So why? Because we were serving other gods in Babylon, right? Just like our fathers. Do here, right? Our fathers serve false gods, right? My father don't know who Yahweh and Yahweh Shai are or or is. They don't. He don't know that, right? Our for our fathers uh, are not in the truth. We're in this truth. We know Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right? Verse three. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood and led him throughout and led him throughout all the land of Canaan. And multiplied his seed and gave him Isaac. So before Abraham came into the land of Canaan, he was in Haran. And multiplied his seed, singular, and gave him Isaac. Right? Acts chapter 7 and verse 3. And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall, I shall show thee. And that land was Israel, which later on became Israel. It was, um, it was named Israel afterwards when we got into that land. But when the Canaanites dwelt in it, when the Canaanite dwelt in it, it was called the um, also the land of Jebu. 
Or I forgot where that scripture's at, but also the land of Jebu. Acts chapter 7 and verse 4. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, out of Ur of the Chaldees, and dwelt in Haran, which is Haran. So when he left Ur of the Chaldees, Abraham dwelt in Haran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein he, wherein he now dwelt. And that land is speaking about Israel. All right? So Stephen was breaking down the history to our forefathers or to, to, to Israelites that wherein he now dwell in that land where Israelites were dwelling at, when Stephen was around, it was referring to the land of Israel, right? And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession, right? Because when Abraham went to Canaan, you still had those Canaanites in there. All right, but let me finish reading verse 5. First, and I got to, uh, I forget where I got to jump to. Genesis, I know it's Genesis 15. All right, let's finish reading this first. Acts chapter 7 and verse 5. And he gave him none inheritance in it. No, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to a seed, singular, not seeds, plural, but seed, singular, after him, when as yet he had no child. I believe it's Genesis 15. Or well, it could be Genesis 12. Hold on. Right, Genesis chapter 12 and verse, verse, let's start at verse 4. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 70 and 5 years old when he departed out of Haran. Right? And Abraham took Sarah his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran and they went to, well, Haran is in Syria and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came so from Ur of the Chaldees to Haran to Canaan verse 6 and Abraham or before it's called Abraham, Abraham passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, which is Shechem, unto the place of Moreh, 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 and the Canaanite was then in the land. That's why the Mosai said, I'm not going to give you no possession here, but I'm going to give it to you, your seed, right? Because when Abraham went down to, to Canaan, you still had those, those uh, Canaanites or those Hamites in that land. Right, and the Canaanite was then in the land. Let's, let's go to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis chapter 17. And verse 5. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations shall I ha have I made thee. And Abraham means a father of a multitude. Right? Because the Israelites are the sand of the sea, like the scriptures say. Innum innumerable for number. They cannot be counted. There's more Israelites than any other nation on this earth. The majority of people living on, in, in, this, in this world are Israelites. Right? Because we are the sand of the sea. Right, and it says verse 6, so Abraham means a father of a multitude, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, 
and will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. Right, each tribe is a nation. When you go to Revelation 21 and it breaks down, it goes into and explains the, the, uh, the 12 gates. A, a gate, gate could represent a people or the gates could represent a people. Right, it talks about the gate of the, the, the children of Israel or the gates, the 12 gates. Because each tribe is a is a nation of people, right? Like Yahushua's lineage, he's from the tribe of Judah. That's his nation, right? That'll be the so-called blacks here in America, the tribe of Judah. Ephraim would be the so-called Puerto Ricans. That would be the uh, yeah, the so-called Puerto Ricans would be the tribe of Ephraim. That would be their biblical nationality, not Puerto Rican, but Ephraim, right? And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will and I will establish my covenant, or a covenant means an agreement, between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. Right? And to thy seed, everything is singular. It doesn't say seeds as of many. Like the scriptures say in Galatians, because Abraham had more than, than one son. He had eight sons. He had a believer with six with the Torah, one with, with the bondwoman, Hagar, which she, um, Abraham's firstborn was Ishmael from, from Hagar, which he didn't receive the blessing. Uh, or the promises. He had did receive a, a blessing, him and his 12, uh, Ishmael and them, you know, having land like Saudi Arabia, which would be the Ishmaelites of the Arabs of the, uh, today. Till this day, they, they dwell in like uh, Dubai and around those uh, areas. But you had um, 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 Isaac, which was born, and this um, promise was made to Abraham before Isaac was born, right? And Isaac came out of... Um, Oh man, Sarah, Salakim, forget, you know, you know, too much on my mind, Salakim, Salakim for that, too much on my mind, right? Can't grab every precept, man, you can't, I, I'm only by myself, you can't grab every precept, All right? Genesis chapter 17 and verse 7, and I will establish my covenant, once again, covenant means agreement, between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto them and to thy seed after thee. So right, so this promise was only given to Abraham, then it was passed down to Isaac, then it was passed down to Jacob. So let's grab a precept. This is Sirach chapter 44, and let's start at verse 22. Let's, yeah, verse 22. Sirach chapter 44 and verse 22. With Isaac did he establish likewise for Abraham, his father's sake, the blessing of all men. What to Israel, okay? So it went from Abraham to Isaac. And the covenant agreement and made it rest upon the head of Jacob. So it didn't go down from Abraham to Ishmael to Esau. It went to Abraham, Isaac, then Jacob. Right, and Abraham is an Israelite, Jacob or Isaac is an Israelite, Abraham is an Israelite, Jacob is an Israelite. Ishmael goes back to the Ishmaelites and to these Arabs. Right? They're not a, a, a promised seed. Right? They're gonna be slaves in the kingdom under us. Right? And made a rest upon the head the head of Jacob. And he acknowledged him in his blessing and gave him a her inheritance and divided his portions among the 12 tribes did he part, part them. Why did it say 12 tribes and, and what? The blessing of all men, because those 12 tribes are a nation. Those, those are men, right? You had men, women, and children. Salak. Right? So among the 12 tribes did he part them. Genesis chapter 17 and verse 8. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan, which was called Israel. When we came into that land, it was called Israel. For an everlasting possession. 
and I will be their God. Right? Verse 9, And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which he shall keep between me and you and thy seed. Singular. Not plural, but singular. After thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now we know that Abraham circumcised Ishmael and his other sons. But when I go back to Acts, Acts chapter 7, Stephen is going to break it down. Who that, 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 that promise or the covenant of circumcision really Went, um, was passed down to, all right? Of course, Abraham circumcised Ishmael, but that was it was all for the Israelites, all right? It was all for the Israelites. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Verse 11, and he shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. Right? Now, let's go to Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 7, let's start at verse 4 again. Then came, well, let's read verse 4. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans, or the Chaldees, and dwelt in Haran, and from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein he now dwell. Right? Meaning Abraham went into that land where now he dwell. Meaning Abraham went into the land of Canaan wherein you Israelites now dwell. Right? And that's speaking about Israel. And it's not talking about uh, um, um, Salakim. This, this Stephen was breaking it down to Abraham went down into the land of Canaan, right? But you know when he was in the land of Canaan, there was a famine, then he went down into Egypt. Remember that? You got to keep that in mind too, right? He removed him into this land wherein he now dwelt, right? Because Israelites during the time of Stephen were dwelling in Israel. And he gave him none inheritance in it, right? Because like I mentioned, these Hamites were in that land at that time. No, not so much as to set his foot on Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed. Singular. So Stephen is breaking down the history. To his seed. He gave us that possession, right? The, the land of Israel as our possession. Which we're not in that land now. Right? We're not in that land. You got Amalekites in our land now. Not us. We're not in that land now. And to his seed after him when as yet he had no child. So when you read Genesis 17, before Abraham had Isaac, that land was already promised to us, right? It was all predestined, man. Just like for Jacob to get the blessing, to get everything at the end, it was all predestined. For Esau to be the end of, uh, of the world, it was all predestined. For the elect to be come on the scene right now, it was all predestined, Right? For Israelites to receive salvation, it was all predestined. It, was, it has nothing to do with no other nation, no heathen nation. So Stephen was clearly breaking down the history to Israelites. And those Israelites that were in Alexandria, all right, I mentioned that the, underneath, we, we, we was in, um, under the Ptolemaic Empire in Egypt, uh, in Egypt, right, during the Greek Empire, right? Because the Greeks took over, you, uh, over that, uh, around that time. You can read that, uh, read about that in the, Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter 8. Right, you had Israelites scattered in Alexandria, Libya. You had um, Simon of Cyrene who helped Yahweh Shai carry his cross. Simon of Cyrene, right? He dwelt in, in, in Libya. But he was one of Yahweh Shai's uh, disciples. Oh, no, it's a lot. Excuse me, excuse me. I'm almost slipped up, but he helped Yahweh Shai carry his cross. All right? Acts chapter 7, Simon of Cyrene. Acts, I did a video a while back. Even Esau, his sources tell you that Esau, I mean, that, that's, that Simon of Cyrene was a dark skinned man. I did a video a while back. Simon of Cyrene was a dark skinned man. Acts chapter, well, he's honest about that. At least Acts chapter 7. 
and verse 6. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. And this 400 year is 400 years is not speaking about when we came from 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 the west coast of Africa in 1619 to the Americas. It has nothing to do with America. It has to do with ancient Egypt. So Stephen broke down in history to Israelites about ancient Egypt, not no America, right? I mean, a lot of you Israelites do not study like the scriptures command us to do. Study to show yourselves approved. A lot of you Israelites don't study. That's why you don't know the scriptures, right? Speaking about ancient Egypt, which I'm going to prove, I'm going to well, already prove, but we're going to go in, into it more. But and entreat them evil 400 years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, say Yahweh, why Yahweh shy? Right? And the Most High did judge those Egyptians, right? Or Pharaoh and his chariots are cast into the sea. Right, that already happened, man. The Suez Canal is going through the Reed, the Reed Sea. Right, I believe when we came out of the land of of of, of Egypt, well, well, Goshen, around that that area, Goshen. Lord willing, I might do a history lesson on that as well. And after that, shall they come forth and serve me in this place? Right, verse eight, and he gave him the covenant of circumcision. So it wasn't passed down, oh, the covenant of circumcision stuck with, with Ishmael. It doesn't matter what these nations do. They can circumcise themselves, but they're not Israelites. They, they're not, they're going to be slaves under us in the kingdom. They're not Israelites. They're going into slavery. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so, right? And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat the 12 patriarchs. Now you notice it doesn't mention nothing about and Abraham begot Ishmael and Ishmael begot. No, it doesn't mention nothing about because what? Because they are not going to receive the, the blessing and the promises of the kingdom. They already got uh, uh, the blessings here. They already got blessings here. Esau got a blessing here. The fatness of the whole entire world, the sword. Ishmael got his blessing with his sons. Saudi Arabia, Dubai, right? All them Arab countries. Ishmael, man. Those are the Arabs. And Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the 12 patriarchs. Right? Oh, yeah. In Acts chapter 7, I, I just want to cover um, verse 1 through 8. So, Lord willing, this will be part 1. I want to go into more history with Joseph, verse 9, but I'm not going to do that in this lesson. So, I don't know if I mentioned that in the beginning, but Acts chapter 7, verse 1 through 8. Right? So, let's jump to... Um, um, verse 6 again, Acts chapter 7 and verse 6. And, and Yahweh spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land. Right? Because when you go to Genesis chapter. Oh, um, Salakia. Salakia, Salakia. Let me try to find this. Shit. Um. Strange. Let me type in strangers. I believe it actually could have been Exodus. Was it? To be strange, strangers. Right. Oh, Genesis 15. My bad. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 13. And he said unto Abraham, the Most High, said unto Abraham, Abraham, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger 
in a land that is not theirs, right? Because we were strangers dwelling in Egypt. In a land that is not theirs, and shall serve and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. So Stephen said the same exact thing. Broke down the same exact history that's written here in Genesis 15. Stephen in Acts chapter 7 broke down the same exact history that's written here in Genesis the 15th chapter. So, right, because we are strangers. And now we're a stranger. When you look up that word stranger, it's Gar. I already know it says Gar, but... I'll look it up again. H, H 1616, a sojourner. So we were sojourning in the land of Egypt. Right? We were sojourning in the land of Egypt. Right? And the Most High delivered us out of Egypt after that 400 years of hardcore bondage. Let's grab Exodus chapter 1. This Exodus chapter 1, Exodus chapter 1, and let's start at verse 1. Now these are the names of the children of Israel. Which came into Egypt, every man and his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. Verse 5, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Joseph was in Egypt already. So Joseph was down already in Egypt, right? And Joseph died and all his and all his brethren and all that congregation and the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and waxed exceeding exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. So Israelites multiplied in Egypt. Now there arose up a new king. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Right? And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel, or the Israelites, or the Israelites are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, multiply, and it come to pass that when there, there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up. Out of the land verse 11 therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens and they built Pharaoh treasure cities Python and Ramses Ramses but the more they afflicted them the more they multiplied and grew and they were grieved because of the children of Israel verse 13 and the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor so the Egyptians had us under hardcore bondage for 400 years in Egypt. Now, our forefather, Joseph, was already in that land prior to us coming down there. All right, but we were in bondage for 400 years. And those Egyptians, I want to make mention of this as well. Those Egyptians come from one of the sons of Ham, Mizraim. All right, which is the father of the Egyptians, which are Hamites, a dark-skinned race of people that afflicted Israelites. When you look at history, you look up the, the, the hieroglyphs, you look up the walls of Egypt, or, or you look up the, just history, just go into history in general. Even Esau, Edom tells you that those Egyptians were dark-skinned people, just like the Israelites. Right? When you read about color scriptures, Exodus 4, Numbers 12, Job 30 and 30, Zephaniah 1 and 1, Revelation 1 and 13 through 15, right? Song of Songs 1 through... Uh, uh, Chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. So many scripts. Phinehas, the Negro. Phinehas was a dark-skinned man. But anyway, Israelites are a dark-skinned people as well. Right? Those Hamites, which today will be called Africans, go back to, to a dark-skinned race or lineage of people. Right? Those Hamites or these Africans. All right? Which, which today will be called the Sudanese. Um, right? The Sudanese, the... the the people living in Sudan, right? Sudanese, uh, South Africa, 
Um, a lot of, you know, because Africa is big. You know, you got millions and millions and millions and millions of those Hamites living in Africa to this day. And they're here in America too, right? They make money off you, Jakes. But you had uh, Israelites under hardcore bondage underneath these Egyptians for four, for four hundred, hundred years. All right, just like here in America, you were in hardcore bondage. You were building what? You built the White House. You Negroes built the White House. You built um, Capitol Hill. You Negroes built Esau Edom's empire, right? And that's why they also too spiritual. That's why this place is called spiritual Egypt because Egypt symbolizes a house of bondage or uh, it means a house of bondage. You Israelites are still in bondage, right? That 400 year prophecy has been debunked. And the reason why, because a lot of Jake says is, is from 16, 19, and the Most High was going to free us in 2019, but that didn't happen. Why? Because the scriptures say this. This is um, Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. So nobody knows when the Most High is, 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 is going to send you. Now, I was shot, I don't even know. And he's going to tell you here. No, not the angels of heaven, not even the angels, but my father only. So Yahweh Shai doesn't even know when, when, when um, the Most High is going to give him that go-ahead to, to, to crack those clouds and destroy Esau, Edom, and take Esau, Edom out of power. He don't even know that. But you got people making up dates. Um, oh, you got this one devil. He died back in um, 2000 or something. His name was Harold Campin, this old-ass Edomite. That, that, that said that the world was going to end in October 21, 2011. That shit ain't happened. You got a lot of Israelites that say, oh, um, the Most High is going to deliver us out of America after 400 years. They ain't talking about that. Stephan was clearly breaking down in history to Israelites about us being in ancient Egypt, not America. So you, uh, that's just shows you the lack of study that our people have. They don't study they don't study. The most I got the angels blocking your mind from getting or from receiving or your mind being open to the truth. So you're not going to get it. If your mind is closed, you're not going to get it. All right. This thing is only for, for the initiated, for the, uh, the elect only. Lord willing, I'm one of those men. <laughs> Lord willing. That's why we always got to say Lord willing. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour, no, no man. So nobody's going to know. When the Most High is going to uh, uh, send you how he's trying to crack those clouds. Nobody, nobody knows that. Right? No, not the angels of heaven. The angels can't tell the Most High what to do. But my Father only. Right? Yahweh Shai don't even got no... That's just shows you that the Heavenly Father and Yahweh Shai are two separate spirits. Two separate entities. If Yahweh Shai don't even know. He clearly told his disciples, look, I don't know. Just like we tell each other. We don't know. We tell each other that we don't know, right? That's why it says, watch and pray. Unless that day should catch you on a wedge. Watch and pray, right? And also 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. 1 Thessalonians, yeah, 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, goes into that, right? That day shall come as a thief in the night, right? So you had these Egyptians, all right, abusing us, all right? Showing no form or no type of mercy to Israelites in ancient Egypt. All right? Did I go into Genesis chapter 12? Let me see, son. I could have actually read Genesis. Did I read? Yeah, yeah, I did read Genesis 12, right? Could have started from the top, but it doesn't matter. As long as the point is proof. So Abraham was in the earth of Chaldees first. The most I told him, leave from that land. So before he got into Canaan, he had to go to Iran, which is north. Right? In Syria. Then he had to go down to the land of Canaan, which the Hamites were still dwelling in that land. That's why the most I told him, this ain't for you here. Right? All right? You're going to be a stranger here because this land is not yet yours. All right? And that's why he went down into Egypt. He was a stranger there too. Right? And plus there was a famine in the land of Canaan, so much to go into. Right? So you went from Ur of the Chaldees to Haran to Canaan. Acts chapter 7 and verse, I'm going to start at verse 6 again, I'm going to read to 8, I'm going to just wrap it up. And God, or Yahweh, 
why Yahweh Shai spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land. We were strangers in Egypt, right? Right, that Hebrew word is gar for strangers, to, meaning to be a sojourner. It, that, that is referring to Israel as being strangers, right? Right, you had Moses' son, Garshim, right? Exodus chapter 2, you can read about that, read about him. That name, Gershom, literally means to be a sojourner. That was one of Abraham's sons. And he's a, Gershom was a, a, a Levite from the tribe of Levi. He was an Israelite. And God spake on this wise that his seed, why? Because his father Moses was a, a, a Levite and an Israelite. And God, Yahweh, spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge said God was the most already judged these Egyptians and after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place and he gave him the covenant of circumcision and so Abraham begat Isaac which he circumcised Isaac as well and circumcised him the eighth day and Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat the twelve patriarch and Jacob was also circumcised right so this thing is all for Israelites so Stephen broke down in history to Israelites in Jerusalem right those that were contending with Stephen were all Israelites he broke down in history why would Stephen break down in history to non-Israelites right the ones that were in bondage in Egypt were Israelites it wasn't no other nation right it wasn't Mizraim Mizraim was the son of Ham one of the sons of Ham Right? With, with the Egyptians, all right? Or these Africans, all right? And they're not the Negroes. They're dark skinned, but they're not the Negroes. And with that, the water Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, call Halali Yahweh Shai, 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 Lord willing, this video was edifying. Lord willing, Lord willing was edifying. We gotta say Lord willing. Shalom.